All right, we're at the close of another trading day. So let's get you a breakdown of market activities today. And of course, insights into some of the events that are driving the market. This, of course, is Market Pulse on New Central in partnership with Narometrics. Welcome. I am your host, Joanna Mustafa. And of course, on the show today, is the income redistribution coming into play in Nigeria as President Tinubu seeks to uh, tax banks' FX gains? That's a conversation that has been ongoing since yesterday evening, and we'll continue it here today. We're also getting into two particular stocks that we can't get our eyes off of on the NGX. Uh, so stick around for that conversation on Pulse of the Day and Crypto Exchange. Oh, OKX is set to discontinue its service in Nigeria. Uh, this is due to unfavor unfavorable policies. Could this be the first of many? Um, and what does this spell out for the crypto ecosystem here in Nigeria? We'll get into all that and more, but let's kick things off with the NGX and what is happening on the markets today. Of course, markets are making a comeback from yesterday's dip up almost half a percent. All share index 100,503.2, up 47%. This is the highest it has been since mid-April. So significant gains there. Let's come to the top gainers. I would say uh, the usual suspects uh, on the top gainers, uh, UCAP, Oando. Um, notice, noticeably absent is Qtix, right? Uh, they're breaking their run on the top gainers list, but it still gained almost 7%, uh, specifically 6.95%. We're coming now to the losers list. Um, and you know how they say gainers, you know, today, losers tomorrow. Livestock feed, we know, uh, for a good part of last week was on the gaining list. Um, now it's on the losers list. I guess investors are taking profits, right, after pushing the price last week. Coming to top movers now, uh, banking stocks, of course, are witnessing a decline in share price. Uh, some are saying investors are reacting to news of taxation. Uh, we know that Zenith Bank specifically uh, declined 7%. So all in all, there was that decline on the NGX, but this was, of course, hedged by gains from Airtel, which gained about 4.76%. Um, it's not a top gainer, but we know that it's the second largest stock on the exchange. So when they sneeze, the market moves pretty much. So yes, a positive uh, today on the NGX. Of course, we'll take a, a deeper breakdown um, on market activities um, as they come up uh, just after the break. Uh, Tony Odutola, Depsy Head Investment Department, FCMB, will be joining me to assess today's markets. So stay with us. All right, you're tuned in to Market Pulse. Right now, we are picking up the pulse of the day with Tony Odutola. He is the Deputy Head Investment Department for FCMB. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much for having me, Jonna. All right, it's a pleasure. All right, we'll get that corrected, but it's a pleasure having you on. Um, let's get into the conversation and the pulse of the day. Uh, there has been, uh, there have been a, a number of uh, consistent top gainers on the NGX. United Capital is a consistent gainer um, on our radar. Just yesterday, it was up over 43.48% uh, year to date. It didn't make the list today, but um, it did make the list as a top gainer, actually. Uh, there's usually a story behind growth in share price, but this particular stock seems to have beaten the understanding of several market analysts. Uh, Tony, what are the sentiments driving this bullish run? Uh, okay, thank you very much for having me. Uh, first and foremost, I wish to say that, uh, you know, the opinions I'll be sharing will be mine and not of uh, my, my employers, uh, just, to, just to put that straight. But, but I think that, uh, to your question, uh, it's important to situate this side-by-side -side of the securities listed on the NGX. So the returns may not be entirely out of place. When we look at year-to-date returns. We've had um, stocks that have done uh, higher than this uh, as, as of this period. So, um, so, so with that said, I do not know what uh, catalyst is, is driving this, but you can safely say probably you have um, particular investors who are desirous of um, consolidating their stakes in the, in, the, in the company responsible for the renewed uh, demand. Uh, and then, moreover, it's been a stock that is historical for for you know paying dividends. So who knows? Uh, probably there is a there is an interim in the works. Mm. 
Mm. Perhaps uh, we'll see about that. But there's also conversation uh, around the fact that the stock may be overvalued uh, and investors are adopting or taking that short position on the stock. Uh, are, are there sentiments misplaced, would you say? Uh, well, well, I would say that for, for every gainer, you know, there will be a loser. I and mean, someone will have to be on the shorter end of the stick at, at every point in time, or what you call uh, the greater full theory. Um, whether it is backed by fundamentals, uh, total analysis, or it's just pure sentiments, there will be price movement. So whichever one is at play at any given time determines the direction of the stock. So it may be difficult to say if sentiments are misplaced or otherwise, because it, you know, it then depends on which of the uh, uh, you know, uh, sentiments is driving the, the stock. But from what we see, if the gains is not exactly market-wide, you know, then it's, it's, it's safe to say that there are, you know, specifically investors that have, um, you know, uh, interest that want to then consolidate. All right, we'll see how this run goes. Uh, there's another stock that we can't keep our eyes off. Um, it's the cable manufacturer, Qtix. Uh, between June uh, 12th and now, its share price has appreciated over 46%. Uh, there's a year-to-date return of 144%. Um, however, looking at the historical antecedents to this stock, uh, of this stock, is there the possibility or probability that this is yet another bull trap? Well, um, that's, uh, a, 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 that's, that's a serious uh, allegation to me. Um, I mean, I was looking through today, and it was interesting that number of trades on Kutix was over 450. Uh, I mean, that's that's quite high and probably suggests that trades are, you know, broad based. But of course, it doesn't tell if, um, you know, buyers or, or, or a buyer is concentrated or, or, or it's, you know, diverse. I mean, that information should help to, to tell more about the goings on around the stock. Uh, but, you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, when you don't have um, the market breadth making that uh, quantum gain, then it speaks to specific interest, you know, around uh, related parties or uh, you know individuals who have who, who are interested in, in a particular stock. And it could be for for anything. It could be for you know uh, new takeovers. It could be for I mean for, for whatever it is. But I mean, but 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 it's difficult to say. However, if you don't have macro stories that point to this or news, in, you know, in the indicating that there's something going on, um, then it's, it's probably safe to say that it may not be something that um, investors generally should run after, because at some point in time, this you know interest will win. Mm, all right. Uh, we'll see whether or not this is the end of the bull's run as regarding that stock. Uh, but yesterday, uh, moving on from there, yesterday we had a conversation with Mukhtar Mohammed um, on the need for some sort of uh, regulation uh, when it comes to private investors buying out listed companies and then going ahead to delist the company. We know that right now, Orlando PSC is set to delist from the JSE and the NGX Earlier this year, there was a case filed against Orlando PLC by uh, minority shareholders. Um, there's been a back and forth, and since then, um, you know, and then just, I think it was yesterday or so, a federal high court uh, has given its ruling. Can you, you know, share with us, uh, or the viewers, uh, through some background on this case, and uh, perhaps what this, the, the verdict given yesterday could mean uh, going forward? Well, I mean, Orlando's story has been in I mean, a love-hate relationship with the market. Um, there's been quite a lot of back and forth between management stroke um, uh, core investor and minority shareholders as to as to um, you know how the company should then go forward. I think this started from the days of um, their purchase of Coloco Phillips, sometimes in 2014. You know, hear about, and there's been all that back and forth. Uh, there's been resurgence with the new uh, direction the company has come to to share with the market uh, um, in terms of uh, you know how it then wants to play in the uh, oil fields that has just been uh, you know taken up. Um, but over and beyond the one, I think we should. Um, I mean, this this delisting will mean that there will be opportunities or less um, 
uh, alternatives for investors to be able to to you know take in in the market. But I think there are there are positive also in that subsector that we should look at. Um, within refinery real estate that are coming to the market, and NPC is coming to the market. So maybe even if one do delist, there are other opportunities that we can um, focus on. But, but clearly, um, we entirely can't um, legislate for you know owners of businesses, you know whether to stay on the market or go. Um, we, we 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 should encourage them to stay uh, because it then creates uh, you know more like a commonwealth for everyone for every investor to be able to take part of. Um, but but beyond that, there's probably not not so much you know you, you can do. I mean, you, you can't force on, on Irish, uh, minority shareholders to sell their shares. Uh, meaning that uh, even if you then go ahead and list, you still have them on your books and you still have to to manage them. Uh, but in terms of optics probably does not look you know too good because this has been protracted it's stayed on for, for far too long i think uh so if um if we're talking about being being open enough to be able to discuss what, what the issues are uh one probably needs to do a bit more in managing those uh, uh, uh interests for them. Um, quickly, before we let you go, we know that the crypto ecosystem in Nigeria has come under heavy scrutiny and regulations. Um, regulations are being rolled out, right? Um, and in reaction to that, OKX, a crypto exchange, is set to discontinue services here in Nigeria, effective August 16, 2024. Could this be the first of many? What's your assessment of you know, sex handling of the crypto space? Um, so I, I, I take a bit of a different view. I, I think that the crypto community needs to do a bit more, um, a bit more in the sense that if you operate in the market where you are, you know, talking to multitudes of you know, people within a the market, then you're probably going to be open to regulation of some sort. And what I expect that should happen is that, you know, players in that space we need to do a bit more of advocacy in letting the regulators know and the market itself understand their business. Uh, because, you know, for everything that you do not understand, it, it, you, will, you will be opposed to it, you know. So they, they, they need to do a bit more in carrying regulators along to understanding their business. If truly there is, you know, something positive to, you know, to to give to uh, participants, I think that in itself helps to reduce the patrimony that, that you have. Because, I mean, not just in Nigeria, in, in all other clients, you have this back and forth between yeah. crypto operators mm -hmm. and, and the regulator of government. And I think uh, if, you, if you're selling something and you know it, it, it's valuable, it's about bringing it to the table and they tell you what their fears are. You can need those fears. You can, you know, plug those holes with whatever. And we should not have a win-win kind of situation because what the uh, SEC is trying to prevent is a situation where either the country or citizens of the country will be will, would have losses, mm. you know, by by virtual this. So mm. it's for the operators of that system to be able to come to the table and say. We hear you, we see what those fears are, and these are the things that we are doing to make mm. sure that that does not occur. Mm. I, I, I do not think that you know, it should be too much of a trouble. So there's definitely the need for that dialogue between the regulated and the regulators. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Tony Odutola, Deputy Head Investment Department, uh, FCMB. Thank you for joining us. Uh, looking forward to having you in uh, on the conversation some other time. Thank you very much for having me. You're watching Market Pulse in the spotlight today. Nigeria's president has asked Nigerian Senate to increase the 2024 budget by 6.2 trillion naira. 3.2 trillion uh, of that amount is to go to infrastructure and the rest to recurrent expenditure. Uh, but how exactly is this to be funded? Well, it seems another tax 
is in the offering as 50% of bank uh, profits uh, realized from foreign exchange devaluation is to go to the federal government. This is what is contained in the proposed amendment to the 2023 Finance Act, which was sent by the president to the Senate. Uh, David Olujimi, financial markets analyst with Narometrics, is with me now to discuss. David, we talked about this a bit yesterday towards the end of the show as the news broke. Just how much profit from Forex gains was recorded by the banks in the period on the question? And how, uh, or have you done the math uh, with the 50% taxation on that figure? So um, here's the thing about the law. The proposed amendment is a 50% windfall tax on realized FX gains. So now we have also come into a new subject, the subject of realized FX gains and unrealized FX gains. Now, according to Narometrics data, Narometrics data tracked about 3.37 trillion may real as um, FX gains recorded by banks in, in the financial year 2023. However, we have not been able to track, or this is another subject of intense accounting, to be able to track what are the realized FX gains and unrealized FX gains, due to the fact that some banks have long position on um, foreign currency, foreign currency denominated assets and liabilities. So we don't, we don't, we can't really say. Now we have come to a new subject that I believe that the accountants. The accountants and the accounting heads in the government have will do a lot, will do a lot of mathematics. Mathematics. To get to. Well, they are giving themselves that work. They're but aren't these gains? Job already. Yes, yes. Aren't these gains already subject to corporate taxation of thirty uh, yeah. percent? So that's one thing. That's one thing that I was discussing with. I was. I discussed with a friend today, and that is something that came up in the discussion. Hmm. The place of corporate company income tax, corporate capital gains tax. These taxes already exist, so there's going to be a prob there's a probable subject of double taxation on the right. earnings recorded by these banks last year. L and don't forget that the CBN released a memo to the banks last year. Don't use your don't use your FX gains for dividends payments. You are going to hedge these funds. However, there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of accounting nuances nuances that go into place in these things. There'll be a lot of probably legal and, um, like I said before, accounting uh, back and forth. Hmm. So there's also that threat, the threat of double taxation on the, inc on the earnings of these banks. Yeah, and I'm sure the, the banks are putting their case together somewhat. Yeah. Um, but what does this mean for tax, the taxable income structure already in place? You're so saying it's not that question. It, it doesn't, it, so it doesn't really, it's, it's not really a positive, it's not really a positive for the banks. However, it's not that much of a deal because it's a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. And basically these banks, um, the windfall tax is a, is, a, is a structure that is put in place by a government to, um, I would say is a wealth redistribution thing. Mm -hmm. It happens a lot in the UK and in the US when oil companies make a lot of money from sales of oil and gas. Maybe there was maybe an event occurred during the course of the year and right. the oil prices of oil went up. They usually um, implement windfall tax mm. to ensure that this, um, the earnings from the hike in oil prices, it goes around. All right, we'll so, see how this all plays out eventually, right? But then there's an ongoing conversation across board. Is the federal government justified with this position, considering a good number of companies ran at a loss or did not realize as much profit, um, and so the federal government did not realize enough revenue from taxation? So uh, does this look like a means to make up for that? Yes, basically. It's hmm. a means to make up, essentially, it came out with an amendment to the, to the um, Finance Act of 2023, the act that backs up the budget. So basically, we see a situation where the government is trying the, the Nigeria has a revenue problem, a revenue problem at the moment, and I feel like that's one of the ways they've looked up and down, and they've seen that okay, this is one means we can, we can put in place. But, and another thing we should also know is that there are no, this is not, this is not a case of black and white. There's a lot mm. of gray areas around this subject because last year Nigerian companies suffered a lot right. when it comes to FX revaluation. Mm. MTN recorded over a 700 billion FX loss. Um, un, um, PZ causing every manufacturing industry in Nigeria, even to Dangote cement, Dangote so, sugar, they all 
posted mm. losses, but so, the banks posted tremendous profits. Gains, right. So maybe so, they're trying to balance that out. Um, right. You know, we'll see about that. Um, but then the conversation, the banks right now, what does this spell out for them? Uh, of course, they're already under pressure to raise capital to meet up with CBN's requirements on the bank's recapitalization. Um, we saw them under pressure today on the NGX. So, I mean, what does this spell out for the banks pretty much? So, so basically, it doesn't, really, it doesn't really affect much because, like I, said in, like I said in the beginning, like I said earlier, it doesn't really affect much because the, the recapitalization guideline giving was raised only share capital and share premium. Basically, the CBN wants them to go and raise new funds. Hmm. We are not recycling funds here. We are not saying bring us your retained earnings or bring right. us your different reserves. No. So hmm. basically, go and raise new tier one funds, new fresh money. Basically, go and bring in new money. All right. If new you have, okay. If you have your, if you have your, um, if you have your FX gains in your FX reserves, then that means it is just there. What the government is basically doing now is they are cutting 50% of it and say we are taking that. All right, new money. We'll see how you know that activity you know goes on. Of course, that's something we're tracking here on Market Pulse. Thank you, David, uh, for Thank that you. breakdown. Uh, this story isn't yet over, right? And uh, we'll keep you updated with all the developments as that comes out. Uh, there's a yeah. poll up. Uh, it's over to you, of course. Are you one of those making a case for the government that the banks only took advantage uh, of the times uh, and that the profit realized was not organic and the profit made off of the federal government's policy direction or redirection should be taxed, uh, redistributed to the people? Or you believe it's a win and that win should be left for the banks, right? Uh, if anyone should benefit, it should be the shareholders of the banks. What do you think? The poll is up. Let's get your pulse on this conversation on X at Narametrics. Up next, we're heading to the African markets. Let's, um, let's get into that. Of course, uh, the market was largely bullish. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, what happened in the markets, the bulls pretty much had the markets across board all but the NSC, Nairobi Stock Exchange. We know that there have been protests, you know, again uh, in Kenya, and perhaps that's what's uh, affecting uh, their stock exchange, the NSC. But across the board, largely, largely bullish, largely positive. We'll be tracking and seeing where the markets go with that and whether or not NSC picks up and confidence is reignited in Kenya's markets. And that's the show for today. How will the banks and other stakeholders receive the government's plan? Uh, to tax 50% of the profits realized from foreign exchange devaluation. That's something we'll keep our eyes out for. And is o uh, OKX's move the genesis of an exodus of crypto exchange from the Nigerian space? We'll be tracking all this and more right here on Market Pulse. 4 p.m. every weekday. You do not want to miss it. We're going to leave you, right? That's our show today. Join me tomorrow. We're going to leave you with the international markets, markets outside of Africa.